So good morning, everyone. I'm super excited to be here today because I feel deep connection with this topic. Uh, I'm not going to give you a formal speech today because I see from your agenda that you have plenty of those in the list already. So I'm going to just uh, share you my story, which actually proves why I'm so confident that this decision we made years ago uh, to give a chance for a younger generation to vote in the local elections was a great thing to do and the right thing to do. So it all started when I was 16 years old and uh, I wanted to make a change. I now live in a small town called Hapsalo. I was born there and it's uh, 100 kilometers from here, 10,000 people living there only. And at that time, when I was 16 years old, it was a very, very quiet town, small town. For younger generation, not many things to do, mostly for older people. But we wanted to make a change. We wanted to make Hapsalo alive, to make it more active. So the first thing I did, actually, uh, was taking responsibility by myself. Uh, it wasn't given for us. The opportunity wasn't given for us at that time. We had to take it by ourselves. So the first thing I wanted to have was having fun, of course, if I was 16 years old. So me and my friend, we decided that uh, we become DJs in my school. So we started playing music and entertain our fellow students in my school. So we had lots of fun. And it actually led us to the next step. My fellow students and friends told me, Lauri, you are now famous in the school. You are active in the school. You should be a candidate for a student council board as a chairman. And it was called the, the monarch at that time. So I decided, why not? And I ran for the chairman. And thanks to the help of my friends and, uh, and fellow students, I got elected. And uh, I was proud to stand for our rights for two consecutive terms in my high school. And um, I learned a lot during this time. I learned what democracy is all about, what is leadership all about, what is to, um, uh, to lead people, to connect people, uh, how to speak, how to debate, and so on. And, uh, and it all took me to the next step. Uh, we already made school life more active. We wanted to do life in our town more active. So we formed a youth club, Estonian Reform Party Youth Club in Hapsalo. And the first thing we did was um, putting together a team. And during those years, we gathered actually 350 young people together. Can you imagine? It's a quite a huge amount of young people in such a small town. And even though our mother party, Estonian Reform Party, was in the opposition at that time, the coalition always asked us, what is our opinion? What we would like to have in Hapsalo? What kind of events there should be? What kind of uh, activities there should be? What kind of actions should be taken? And so on. So the, the first big thing we started to do was building a skate park for our younger generation because we knew quite well what we want. We knew what kind of town we want. We, know, we knew what kind of activities we want. So we started doing, um, building uh, playing grounds for children. We started doing charity things and organizing seminars and parties and so on. So it was a very active time. And, uh, and today, Harpsalo is called the uh, youth-friendly city. So I don't know if it's because of that, but I definitely am sure uh, that we, we, we put our effort into that. So. And the next step for me was uh, running for the president of uh, Estonian Reform Party Youth. It means the whole state level. And we started to develop uh, youth clubs over Estonia. We started to uh, organize different kind of events, giving seminars, educating our children and youth. Uh, so it gave me huge experience. And the next logical step for me was uh, running for a member of city council. Lots of my friends and, and colleagues from youth club uh, encouraged me to become a candidate. And, um, and uh, we had already done lots of things outside. But now we decided, OK, it's time to go and try to reform things from inside. It's one of the best ways to, is to be a candidate by yourself. So I was running a candidate, and I got elected because of my friends and the team. Unfortunately, at that time, uh, many of my team members were not allowed to vote because they were not 18 years old yet. But still, I was fortunately, fortunate enough to, uh, to get elected. And we started to reform things on the city level uh, from the council. Um, years go by, and uh, university came, and then working years came until 2007, when some of my friends told me, Lauri, now it's time to run for parliament. I was thinking, 
are you crazy? Because uh, I wasn't confident about that. I was too young. I was only 24 years old at that time. And lots of other people, opponents, told Lowry, who are you? Nobody knows you. You haven't done anything yet. You are too young, and so on, so on. And then I decided, OK, I will do that. I will prove it to myself. And because of my team and uh, fellow club members, we formed quite a, an active team, a campaigning team, and we did a lot of work. And I was fortunately, fortunate enough to get elected into parliament in 2007, when I was 24. So since then, I've been in parliament. And the uh, first eight years, I've been working in the Committee of Culture Affairs, which means we focused on the topics like education, culture, sports, integration, and youth questions. And one of the main questions, talking about youth, was uh, giving more rights for our younger generation to, to vote and to be more active in the society. So uh, on different kind of debates, we had a lot of debates going on at that time on this topic. Uh, I was living proof, and I was living example. I didn't have to find any more additional uh, proofs for that to explain or, or to argue, because I was just giving my story. I was a living, living example, and, uh, and of course there were lots of opponents who told the Lowry, mm, we won't trust younger people. They are like, it's, it's too easy to influence or to affect them, and then politics goes to schools and so on. But actually there were not any real arguments against that for me, because uh, I told them that we already have 18 and 19 year olds who can vote, and they still go to schools. What's the problem? It's a question of uh, school rules. There's no problem with that. And talking about affecting or influencing people, Professor Arnold Dodge just uh, told you that about the results of the survey. Only 1% actually uh, listened to the recommendations. Other people just decided by themselves. And as I mentioned, we, we knew quite well what we want from our hometown. When I was 16, I, I really know what I wanted. I wanted to have fun, I wanted to have more active life, to have a skate park, to do charity things, to organize seminars, to educate myself, and so on. So I think nowadays, 16-year-old uh, people are even smarter and, and, uh, and even more clever. So um, I had no doubt about that. So it was very, very easy for me to protect this idea. Of course, we got some confidence from, uh, from other pioneer countries who had done it already. For example, Germany and Switzerland and, uh, and Norway, et cetera, uh, already mentioned here. So it wasn't a uh, so tough decision um, uh, for us to make, and I was, I was, I was pretty confident about that. So um, unfortunately, so far, younger generation has been quite passive on elections. But as the, the past uh, surveys showed, now the, the activity went up. So I think it's a matter of time to just um, to form a tradition among younger people to, to go voting and to be a part of, uh, of society and so on. And uh, to make it work even more brilliantly, I think it's very important to integrate it um, tightly with our curriculums, as we already done, actually. But I, I see that uh, it can be done even more better. Uh, we have to explain and teach to our youngsters that what democracy is all about. What is it to take responsibility? Uh, what is real power and what you can really change or what you can't. Uh, the one thing to do is to do it by yourself, as we did, to take responsibility. Now we give this opportunity to the younger generation to, to vote. We didn't have it at, at uh, our time. So we should explain how important it is actually to, um, to, to take this responsibility and to vote and to be active. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I read from the summary that about 25% of uh, youngsters told that they are not interested in politics. But we have to explain in schools also that uh, life is politics, Co take it or not. But uh, uh, I wouldn't even call it politics, it's, it's real life. Because uh, we wanted to have a skate park, we wanted to have fun, we wanted to have seminars and stuff like that. So I wouldn't call it politics, I would call it life. So. Um, we should explain it also like that to our youngsters in schools. So if you put those two, two things together, uh, this practical thing, voting, and, uh, and these teachings, I think it's going to uh, work out brilliantly. So perhaps it's a little bit too early to draw final conclusions yet. Uh, I think we should give some time for that, to settle it a little bit. And uh, as, as uh, Professor Thoughts mentioned, that uh, it was very surprising for me too that the uh, uh, e-elections were very passive among the younger generation. I, I, I think the argument was actually right, that, uh, that they wanted to, to feel it by themselves. And actually, to be honest, the uh, first times, I always went on Sundays with my family to vote. First, I don't know, 
seven or eight times if I went voting. Now I, I do it uh, electronically, but I just wanted, wanted to, to catch the feeling. So I think uh, it's a matter of time, it will work out. And, um, and the next logical step, in my opinion, is parliamentary elections, of course. And, uh, and still, I can, I can be a living proof and, uh, and uh, I can argue for that. So um, thank you very much once more for inviting me here. I'm super excited uh, and thankful for you. Uh, for giving a speech today here and discuss it with you. I wish you good luck and, uh, and power to fight further because I, I can honestly say that uh, this decision we made together actually was uh, because of you, because of the cooperation between uh, Estonian youth organizations and, uh, and our politicians. And, uh, and you, you stepped up and you showed activity and, uh, and that, that's the way it should be. And that's, that's how we make impact in the society. So thank you very much and uh, good luck.